Why am I burping? In today's video, we are gonna be talking about my monthly favorites for the month of July. So if that sounds interesting to you, please keep on watching. We are getting into it right now. I have so many hangnails on my fingers. It hurts to do any amount of anything. And I am going to sit here and whine for a while because all my fingers feel like they're on fire. We are serving color coordinated realness today as we talk about our July favorites. I cannot believe that July is already over, but at the same time, July has also felt like the longest month. So, um, in a true Oriel fashion, we're going to talk a little bit about things that I have been loving this month, not just things, but also trends. I did not make a very comprehensive list this today. Um, I'm thinking of more just going with the flow and talking a little bit about things that have really stuck out to me in my collection as well as some news and updates that um, might come along. So let's jump into it. The first thing that I've been loving that may not be popular <laughs> with the crowd are my hair pieces. I kind of like low-key love looking at a different version of myself every other time I come on to edit something just because I am really kind of <laughs> boring. My hair is really straight and there's not much volume or life in it. I can't really afford to be waving my hair all the time or like curling it because I know there's a lot of different curl patterns and as much as I love all the different curl patterns, I just cannot um, put my hair through that anymore. <laughs> I've bleached it many, many times already and even though it's healthy, it's kind of not great to heat style your hair. Like we know it's not great. So yeah, I absolutely believe that it's probably healthier for me to just keep it up in a protective style, slap on a wig, and for my own visual sanity, not have to look at the same hairstyle all the time. So let me know if you have any suggestions on what wig colors you'd like to see on me. I love like a, a medium length hairdo. I feel like this has been my hair length for so many years of my life. Mm, I kind of like in real life want my hair to be longer, but it is also like harder to manage the longer it is so maybe i should cut it off again and have it like grow out and be healthy i don't know if you have any colors you'd like to see please let me know i have this one i've got a blue one i have a longer navy wig and i believe orange lilac and red and that's what i have so far because my hair's already pink um but like i low-key want some more uh, probably shouldn't because they're expensive but you know <laughs> it's been fun all right um the next thing i want to talk about is well, I probably should have led with this, but I didn't. Um, we decided to get married. We decided to elope um, in August. I'm really excited. It's going to be 8-8-2020, which is like such a fortuitous number. Can you even? Um, <laughs> I know, like lucky dates or whatever, but I just think it'd be such a fun anniversary to have 8-8, right? 2020. Sounds really good. It's really hard to forget. And if we're just going to do like a paperwork marriage like it's not gonna be a huge deal it's just gonna be us and maybe like dinner with friends and stuff like that but it's not gonna be a big ordeal at all we just want to get it done we've been waiting to get married for a while now so we actually went wedding band shopping yesterday and that was really exciting so everything is done and I think we as a couple have been looking forward to this for a long time so I might actually do a trial of my wedding makeup on camera just so I can test the ropes and see how my makeup wears I generally don't have any wear time issues with my makeup even with like a mask on I feel like for the most part everything is pretty even so I don't know we'll see I'm gonna be using this camera to photograph on that day so hopefully the lens will even out my skin tone to make everything look better and if not there's always fixing in post okay so let's get into the actual makeup I'm like waving things around um, because I was excited to get into this so this is the elf jelly pop primer now I think I got this in June or May and I used it on and off whatever Ever since I've used up some of my other primers, I've really gotten to know the Jelly Pop primer a little bit better. She's even lost her cap, which just goes to show how much she has been loved in my collection. And this reminds me of the Milk Hydro Grip, but like even better. I actually do have the Milk Hydro Grip in my collection. I just think it's fine. It's actually not as tacky, so if you're looking for something a little bit less offensive in the tactile department, this one might be the one to go, but I don't feel like it grips onto my makeup as much. I feel like they should have renamed this something else, because Jelly Pop Primer, does not really sound appealing. It's called a dew primer, which I don't see any dewiness once I put stuff on my face. Um, but I do love this. I really feel like this is a great product and I actually may, for once, repurchase this primer. I feel like it is the only primer that I've seen that has visibly given my um, base makeup more longevity. It feels good going onto the skin. It doesn't feel like it is just kind of another layer of moisturizer, like who needs that? I don't need that. As an oily skin gal, I don't need that. Um, so this has been an ultimate favorite of mine. 
Next, I have my base favorite. It's actually what I'm wearing on my face right now. It's the CoverGirl Outlast Active 24 hour foundation in octanoxate sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 20 and I use the shade 810 now this was as I said many times a clearance product that I picked up at the drugstore just kind of on a whim and I wasn't really thinking anything of it because it was just so cheap and I was like I might as well try it out I don't really know what I was thinking at that point in my life um, I was really in the throes of that like wanting to buy makeup for dopamine so <laughs> that's what happened so I ended up picking it up just on a whim and I really really enjoy this product in fact I am not that I'm almost out but I have used up a hefty amount. I've used up almost half of it. I want to say maybe a little bit more than half of it. I'm not exactly sure, but there's um, a good amount of air that has been squeezed out when I want to see just how much I've used. And it just goes to show how much I love this product. I don't think I've even had it for longer than one month, but I frequently do want to reach for it. It has a really light BB cream-esque texture, so very, very thin and watery. doesn't leave a film on the face. It's not greasy. It's not tacky to the touch really kind of smooth, perfecting, but at the same time it has very, very decent coverage. And you'll see this cameo in a lot of my videos and you'll see it in the future. Of course, I don't have that many foundations, so you will see it coming up, but this tends to be a very no-brainer, no-fuss um, product for me. I guess the active means that it's long wearing, when in reality I thought active meant like not too, not too full coverage, not too fussy, because like you're an active girl, like you don't want to be wearing too much makeup. So maybe I was completely misled and this was supposed to be a long wearing foundation and that's why I'm feeling this way but yeah all I'm saying is I was surprised I really love this product I have been using it kind of consistently throughout the month it looks like we're moving into face products which is kind of where the bulk of my stuff lies I've got a couple of standout face products let's start with highlight because there's only one my star highlight of the month is the color pop manifest that super shock cheek thing. I, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone just because I love this thing. I've shown it on camera multiple times already and I think it will continue to feature because there's something about this tone that is just so fabulous. Let me give you a better look. Yeah, it's like a lilac pink. Actually, if you um, dig into the pan like I have, <laughs> you can actually see it looks like um, the way like the, like fudge swirl ice cream looks, you can actually see the swirls of Lilac Super Shock cheek product in here. And I feel like that lilac is what gives this product such a unique flavor on the skin. Actually, let me just toss some on right now. Can't hurt, right? And I either use a brush or my fingers, they're both okay. But I feel like this is the ultimate cool girl highlight. I feel like I have been able to use this with basically all of my looks, either all over the skin, underneath, or kind of mixed in with my base for a more approachable look, or I can kind of tap on top and really preserve that duochrome effect for a stronger, more, you know, punchy look. And I really appreciated that one too. Um, and I just, I love how, <laughs> how I can see my progress in this, which is not good. Um, so that, if I goes to tell you how quickly you can use a product, here it is. I think I paid around $12 for this. It was like one of the bigger pans of Super Shock Shadow, Super Shock Highlight, whatever they call it. Um, so I think the price might have been a little bit higher, but I got it with that tie-dye collection and it's already like, I wanna say half a gun. So I don't think this product has a ton of longevity in terms of being in my collection. I definitely think this will burn very, very bright like a hot star and then in like winter time it'll be gone. But I kind of, I, I have a streak in me where I want to constantly be panning products and getting rid of them, using them up, bringing them out of my collection, and yet I think this would be a perfect winter highlight. So if you're someone who has picked this up or you have a purpley highlight, look into using it in the summer, like on the cheeks. I think it's super fun. And if that's a little intimidating, maybe keep it for winter time because I anticipate this being very, very beautiful. Another good thing about having a super shock highlight is that when you drop them on the floor like that, they don't actually break. I just uh, checked and everything is intact because it's such a creamy product. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. All right, let's keep talking about cheek products. I have the Benefit Cheek Star Reunion Tour. Now this has been really just practical for me. I knew when I bought it, this was just going to be a practical product. I, first of all, can I just say, the smell of these blushes brings me such joy. I know I've talked about how my nose sucks. It's very, very poor. Like, it can't smell anything. So this must be very, 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 very fragranced for me to be able to smell this. But there's something about these powders. <laughs> there's something about these powders that smells like the grandmother I never had. Like, I feel like this very much so re resembles that, like, powdery, violet, delicious smell. Not in a terrible way. I don't mean to say that, like, when you apply this, you're going to smell like a grandmother. But it has this, like, very nostalgic smell for some reason. It might be because I used Benefit products when I was very young. I don't actually know, but 
all in all, looking at this palette, I can tell you that I've mostly used Hoola, um, Sugar Bomb, and Cookie this last month, and they have just been amazing, impeccable colors for my skin tone. Very, very easy to throw on. I do, however, have a criticism that all of these colors kind of look similar on the face, so if you're looking for a ton of variation, you're not gonna find it here. If you're looking for something that's warm and breezy and easy to throw on, in the summertime, this one is your gal. I have really been loving Sugar Bomb and Hula actually in my eyes for a really easy monochromatic look and Cookie is in itself iconic. So this has been a really easy product for me. I actually threw it in my bag traveling when I went back home for a bit and I use it every day I was home. I use it constantly when I'm here filming and so I find it to be really convenient to have in my collection. The other thing that I have been using a little bit more earnestly in my collection is this NARS Overlust palette. First of all, you will see that I have a little plastic film here. I kind of jerry-rigged something so that way the cream products wouldn't evaporate so quickly. And so I have this film that is sealed on the side and it keeps my creams from evaporating. I'm really paranoid about my cream products being kind of going bad before I'm able to use them all up. And although I do use my products very aggressively, I am kind of a monster when it comes to using a product. I don't want to feel like I have to rush. I do want to have like the two or three years to use this palette. Um, and when you have cream putty products, it really does kind of inherently limit the lifespan of these products. So that's why I have this little thingy here, but I do love this palette. Specifically, I love it as a set of blush duos. So I kind of see this as a trio of blush duos. So if you go across one, two, three, I don't actually know if this is how it's intended to be used, but this is how I use the product. I really love putting down the glowy base first, kind of all over the cheeks, smearing it across that like sunburn area, the sunburn region on the face. I actually take a sponge or a stippling brush and really kind of work it in, buff it out. The texture of these putties is delicious. Very, very sophisticated, smooth to the touch. I mean, the, the putty quality of it is, um, I think, perfect. I don't think there would have been in any a, any other good way to formulate this product because I think the putty texture allows it to blend on the skin, but because it's not very wet, it's not like a cream product, it's not an oil product, it's not very emollient, because of that, um, you are able to kind of blend it out very flawlessly and it doesn't feel very sticky on the skin. It doesn't have that very goopy quality. That being said, I then go on top with the corresponding powder color right on top and NARS complexion products. NARS color formulators in general, but color chemists or whatever they're called, they have such an eye for sophistication and elegance. So I feel like the colors in this have been so elegant on my skin. All of them work for me. Um, I don't think the cream products work well as highlights, but I think they could on some skin tones. I'm just saying I love layering these two. They're super, super convenient. For the first half of the month, actually, I was more using the powders, but in the recent um, weeks, I've actually been laying down a base of these products first and then going in with a secondary blush. Now, sometimes I use a blush that's like on my collection, on my table. Sometimes I use a different kind of blush. The blush that I have to recommend today is my Chanel blush. Now, Chanel blushes, again, have that really, this one's a little bit more rosy. I think this is a rose scent. Now, this is the color Rose Bronze. It was recommended to me because the one that I wanted was out of stock, and it is very blue. I actually think it has a slight violet duochrome. Very, very subtle. So very interesting that Chanel came up with this kind of colorway, but um, I would do kind of like the cream product from here and then a blush topper. This is the blush I've been wearing all the time. I'm actually wearing it right now. This blush has been absolutely gorgeous. Part of it is living at Fantasy, having a little Chanel compact on my vanity. Who am I? I live. And the other part is just that it's a good blush with a great formula. Um, it blends out really easily. It looks very blah in the pan, but I find that um, a lot of those blah powder products actually do look very, very beautiful on the cheeks and this one is no exception. Next up in my favorites, actually last up in my favorites, are my Lime Prime palettes. Now I did mention that Venus 3 shot up in popularity rankings. She actually made it to my second favorite eyeshadow palette. This is such a practical palette for a surprising number of reasons. Surprising because it is very bright. You can see a couple of very bold shadows in here, but not surprising because you can also see some very neutral wearable shades in here. The pink, the brown, um, the taupe, and then this entire top row is very wearable because they're sheer kind of glittery dimensional shades. She has been incredible and it, I'm not surprised. Um, I've already talked about this one. What I am surprised about are the two new hauls that I have, the Prelude palettes, and I said that I was really crossing my fingers. I wasn't gonna be roped in. I didn't wanna buy it. And then the Sephora haul happened and I bought these at Ulta. So not really Sephora haul, but with that like thousand dollars worth of makeup, what would I buy? I bought these among other things and kind of was surprised by the results. So actually I thought um, Chroma was gonna be the fantasy palette that I want to use, but I didn't actually use. 
I just try to make sure that I don't use all of the blue colors at once and it is really fun for a pop of color it's really fun because I have a couple of blue wigs that match and so I've been dipping my toes into more colorful makeup um, the Prelude Exposed is beautiful actually I am wearing it on the eyes today and I think what is genius about this palette is that blue shifting color it's very very blue it's very bright I put it on the brow bone and also in the inner corner and I feel like it is super pretty I've actually done another look like this I feel like this palette is conducive to this look every single time a really soft glam look that is effortless chic very very blended with really interesting tones and neutral sophisticated values but at the same time adding in that really strong blue shift can you see her? I don't really know, but I think it's really gorgeous, and I think I might recreate this kind of look all the time. Um, and barring this shade, the rest of it is truly just a classic glam palette. It's really, really fun, really convenient. I have been, not pleasantly surprised, but my expectations have been met, and I have been reaching for her. I have one more product, I'm so sorry, is the Roman 1111 Quad. Now this one I have not been able to put down since I got it. It's basically an eyeshadow quad full of bright lid toppers. Now I think I have a review coming up very very soon about all of the Rowan quads. I kind of talked about who they're for, what they look like, swatch comparisons, and um, a look on them. But I do feel like this one is my favorite, quite predictably out of all of them. So far I've really been loving this. I really love some of the lighter tones, I think the gray one is the one that I use the least, but all of my Rowan quads, all, the trio of my Rowan quads have been kind of at the forefront of my collection, really easy to tap on a sparkly shade at the very, very end, and I'll show you, um, because 1111 has an extra juicy, flaky shade called Situation, and I will just put that on the inner corner to show you how beaming it is. It is truly a lot. Very, very classic me look. I absolutely adore it. So with that being said, I think this is all of the makeup favorites I've had this month. Um, in terms of technique, all I can say is it's been so fun being able to sit down on camera and try out different makeup looks. It's really hard because you do have favorites and I want to give myself room to really lean into those things that I love. But in general, being able to sit down on camera and document what my makeup looks like has been really fun. And being at peace with the fact that not every look I do that ends up on camera is a look that I'm super proud of. And I kind of, not intentionally, but I am kind of normalizing the idea that, you know, it is what it is. I mean, there are days that I have good makeup and I come on here and I film a video and I post it even though it's not fabulous. There are tutorials that I do that come out like, okay. Um, but I do want to just show that, you know, it's not like every single time I sit down and do makeup, I'm extremely proud of the way I look. Sometimes I just look okay, and sometimes I look terrible, but I do have something meaningful to say in my content, or I feel presentable enough to come on here and share something about my day or my life or something like that. So being able to sit down and film a different look every day has been super, super fun, and it almost is like a video diary. I feel like I have really gone back and researched some of my favorite content creators, and looking back, I can see a lot of people have changed styles over time. Um, these are people that I've followed very, very closely and subscribed to them, stuff like that. And if you go back, you can see everyone kind of has a signature look, like their handwriting, right, but on their face with their makeup. And even though there is a signature look, I could identify easily that they did their own makeup, that evolution changes slowly over time. And it's so fun to follow. I'm curious to see what my makeup evolution will look like in a couple years. Will it look different? Because sometimes I look back on pictures of myself in like eighth grade and it looks pretty similar, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, so being able to sit down and film and document my makeup journey has been an ultimate favorite as always and just being able to dedicate so much time to this hobby and feeling passionate about it still. I'm so excited. I have a update on my one month reflection on YouTube coming up very very soon and that will be kind of interesting to see, fleshing out all of the opinions I've had having a YouTube channel, hosting it, creating content, and all I can say is YouTube has been a major favorite this month. Major, major favorite. It's something that I have really thrown myself into 100%. So I think in terms of life things, that is it. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I will be back with a new video in two days. And in the meantime, I hope you subscribe or like this video if you liked it. And don't forget, I will be back very soon and I love you all. Bye.